On the outskirts of the Polish capital, there is a wonderful and romantic corner, the Wilano Palace or Wilano. This is the place where one of the most famous kings of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth lived. He built himself a Baroque country residence from scratch. On the approach to the Vilyaniv Palace, the first thing that stands out is a bright yellow kiosk. It is not only a place where entrance tickets are sold, this is a full-fledged tourist information center with maps, tickets, routes, descriptions of locations, posters and consultations. All information is bilingual in Polish and English. The most important things are also duplicated in Russian. The castle has developed several routes. They allow you to see different parts of the palace and the surrounding garden. Tickets for each of them are bought separately. They also have different approximate duration of the review. And it's good that I paid attention to it because the amount of time for inspection was limited and so we would pay for all the routes and not have time to see everything. Money in the wind. Honestly, I did not expect that the Vilyanov Palace is so big. Moreover, there is such a fascinating park around it. It is very convenient that there is navigation everywhere, arrows for each route. It is clear where you need to go in general and security guards stand between locations and scan tickets. Many moments are automated. Turnstiles at the main entrance, outerwear and luggage can also be left for free with your ticket. It is pleasant here for people with disabilities. Conveniently equipped toilets, ramps at the entrance and exit. Vilyanov Palace is a whole garden palace ensemble. The main style here is Baroque, but in fact here it merges with the old Polish tradition of construction. The palace resembles Polish mansions, Italian and French villas. Now it is one of the important monuments of Poland. The palace was built at the end of the 17th century. The construction was initiated by the king of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, John III Sobieski. By the way, he was born in another beautiful fortress near Lviv, Oleski Castle. Then the royal title no longer came as an inheritance. John was the elected king. He was elected by Polish nobles. A successful military career contributed to this. On the eve of the election, John III Sobieski at the head of the army won an important victory over the Ottoman Empire near the Khotyn Fortress. You can walk around the castle on your own using the information boards which are written in six languages or order the services of a tour guide. They are young here and you can even sit comfortably while listening to stories in certain halls. During the Second World War, the premises were heavily looted and bombed, not as much as the center of Warsaw but the palace needed serious reconstruction. In the middle of the 20th century, they began to restore it to its original appearance. The end of the 17th century, when the royal family lived here, was determined to be original. After works on the restoration of the Vilyanov Palace, it was possible to return numerous works of art stolen by the fascists. This was facilitated by the fact that the palace was a branch of the National Museum. Years later, it turned into a separate structure. Since 2006, the museum in Wilano has joined ARRE, the Association of European Royal Residences, and in 2013 it was renamed the Museum of the Palace of King Jan III in Villanova. Today, the Royal Wazienki is called the happiest place in Warsaw, where you can not only relax contemplating nature, but also expand your knowledge of the ideals of the Enlightenment, including through meetings with outstanding philosophers and art historians. Over the years, the square was decorated with sculptures, architectural details, and buildings. In one place, royal features are combined with modern ones, but since they are separated by trees and plants, it all looks harmonious. Visitors can see the following sites, the palace on the island, a rebuilt 17th century bathhouse into a classical two-story palace, decorated with columns and sculptures on the roof. In front of the main entrance, there is a small square which is reached by two bridges, Inside, there are guided tours of the preserved interiors. The court theater is the only one remaining in Poland. It is covered with wood for excellent acoustics and can accommodate 200 people. There is a garden with a fountain and an alley near the facade. On one side, there is a greenhouse where plants are sheltered in winter. Myślewiki Palace is a large semicircular building built as the king's main residence. Over time, it became an official reception house, visited by ministers, ambassadors, etc. The exterior and interior combined Baroque and Classicism. The White House was planned as the ruler's residence, but became a guest building. 
The royal collection of graphics is kept here. The design is plant ornaments intersecting with figures of animals and people. The amphitheater is an open-air antique ruin of a new generation, the only one of its kind in Europe. There is also a monument to the composer Frédéric Chopin from 1910, Kings Jan III Sobieski from 1788 and Stanisław August from 1784. Visitors to the royal residence are provided with contact with high European culture through numerous cultural events and educational activities. Undoubtedly, the most famous of them traditionally include piano concerts, which take place from May to the end of September under the monument to Friedrich Chopin. The Royal Wazienki are open daily to guests from all over the world who can admire the royal collections of paintings and sculptures in the palace interiors and parks. It should not be forgotten that the royal residence has long been one of the most important representative places of the Polish capital, visited by outstanding representatives of politics, science and art, as well as members of princely families and crowned heads. The history of the current palace on the island begins at the end of the 17th century. On the orders of Prince Stanisław Irakli Lubomirski, one of the greatest politicians, writers and philosophers of that time, the bath was built. The Baroque Park Pavilion, designed by the Dutch architect Tilman van Gameren, was intended for relaxation and entertainment, as well as for philosophical reflection. Inside the bathhouse, there was a room stylized as a grotto. In it, a spring gushed, symbolizing the ancient Greek source that brought inspiration to the muses. Stanisław August transformed the palace on the island into a villa museum, which displayed the most valuable paintings from his collection, numbering 2,289 works by the greatest European artists of the 17th to 18th centuries. The Dutch masters were most widely represented here, among whose most valuable works are canvases by Rembrandt. His girl in a picture frame and scholar at a music stand acquired from the King's heirs in 1815 for the Lankaronski collection are currently on display at the Royal Castle in Warsaw, thanks to a gift from Karolina Lankaronska in 1994. Today, housed in the palace on the island, the royal collection of Stanisław August paintings numbers 140 works, exhibited according to 18th century principles. Among the most valuable paintings are the portrait of Sir Charles Hanbury Williams, the English ambassador to Russia and friend of the king by Anton Armengs, Satyr playing the flute by Jacob Jordans the Elder, Esau and Jacob by John Wichters, and portrait of Duchess Juliana Publicola Santa Cruz. Poland is filled with fascinating sites, rich in stunning architecture that reflects the nation's development through various eras. Majestic palaces and fortresses that once housed Polish royalty now captivate tourists from all over the world. Many tour programs in Poland are designed specifically to highlight the country's historical grandeur, making it accessible and engaging for both locals and international visitors. Guides lead travelers along paths once walked by the rulers of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, offering a glimpse into noble interiors, the daily lives of past nobility, and the legends surrounding ancient Polish dynasties. Today I'm continuing my selection of the three most beautiful royal residences in Poland. First up, the Royal Castle in Warsaw. The history of the Royal Castle in Warsaw dates back to the late 13th century, when the first wooden fortress with a moat was built on this site. Over centuries, it was developed and fortified, eventually becoming Poland's main royal residence. Today, the castle is the official residence of the Polish president and partly serves as a museum open to the public. Inside, you can feel the grandeur of Polish monarchy, as this castle was the central royal seat for a significant part of Polish history. During the Swedish invasion, 1655 to 1656, the castle was plundered with priceless paintings, furniture, tapestries, and even the royal library and archive stolen. Many sculptures and symbols of royal power disappeared as well. In 1657, King Casimir began restoring the castle. In 1670, a wedding ceremony for the Tsar and Princess Eleonora took place there, symbolizing the restoration after the Swedish destruction. These walls have witnessed pivotal events in Poland's history, where important decisions were made, laws were written, and high-stakes negotiations were held. Over the centuries, this castle hosted notable figures including Queen Bona Sforza, King Sigismund III Vasa, and Tsar Peter I. On the ground floor, you'll find the new Chamber of Deputies and the Senate Hall, 
where the Polish Parliament, Sejem, later convened and where the Constitution of May 3, 1791 was adopted. It was in this chamber that Tadeusz Reitan threw himself down before the exit, famously exclaiming, Kill me, but don't kill the motherland. The Senate Hall is also where, in 1831, the decree on the dethronement of Nicholas I was passed. Later, in retribution, Russian princes divided the hall into smaller rooms. On the second floor, the royal apartments of Stanisław August Poniatowski hold the Knights Hall, where portraits of prominent Polish scholars and artists are displayed, alongside statues of fame and Kronos, with a clock on his back. In the nearby marble cabinet, portraits of Polish kings are on display. These rooms allow visitors to connect with Polish history before entering the throne room, lavishly designed by Jan Christian Kamsetzer. Also located on the second floor are the Grand Hall, crafted by Dominic Merlini and Jan Christian Kamsetzer, offering further grandeur and historical insights. <laughs>